Today we're going to continue with our activity 2.2, the charades game. And we're going to look at how we can reduce redundancy within our program. We're going to go ahead and explore the starter code for this activity. In order to do that, we're going to need to open up our App Inventor Designer window by opening up a new tab or window in your browser. You can navigate to appinventor.mit.edu. Here you will log in using your Google student email address. You will then need to click on Create Apps and then click on the projects from the top toolbar and then select click on import project.aia from my computer. You will then need to go ahead and upload the charades.aia file into your MIT App Inventor. From within the designer view and blocks editor, we're gonna go ahead and explore all of the components for this app that have been pre-built for us. Now it's time for us to go ahead and explore the code in our blocks editor. Based on the code that has already been set up for us in this app, which buttons do you expect to do something when you start the app on your device or your emulator? In this case, we should be looking at the Start Timer button, the Stop Reset Timer button, the Reset Game button, as well as the Skip button. They all will be doing something once that app is started and we click on one of those buttons. What behavior do you expect these buttons to do? Well, in this case, when the user clicks on the Start Timer button, you should expect the button functionality to basically set the timer to 30 seconds. We'll then go ahead and turn on the clock component by enabling it. We'll set the clock component to count down for one second increments until it reaches zero seconds. When it does reach zero seconds, a sound will play from the player one component. The score will decrease by one point and the clock component will be disabled or turned off. When a user clicks the stop reset timer, what you should expect to happen is that the timer should be set to 30 seconds. We should also display that time in seconds to 30 and stop the timer. When a user clicks on the reset game button, what you should expect is that we should be resetting the score back to zero, displaying a number of correct guesses to zero, set the timer to 30 seconds, and display the time in seconds to 30. We will also need to go ahead and stop the timer. So what happens when a user clicks the skip button? In this case, we should decrement or decrease the score by a value of one. We'll display a new total score or number of correct guesses. Now would be a good time for you to go ahead and test all the different components that have been pre-built for us using either your emulator or tablet. Make sure you go ahead and connect and deploy the app to your app companion or mobile device. You'll want to make sure that you touch all the buttons on the user interface of that application. Ask yourself, did they do what you expected them to do? If not, take a look at the game description and the event handler chart you filled out at the beginning of this activity. Check off any functionality that is already completed for this app. Our main objective for this app is to reduce the amount of redundant code that is found within our charades game app. You'll need to carefully inspect all of the blocks of code for this app. Identify any places in the code where lines of codes are redundant or repeating. Think back to what you learned in the Keep Me In The Loop activity. We can reduce the amount of redundant code or streamline our code by creating what we call procedures. Let's take a look at how we can create a procedure for some redundant code. Let's go ahead and take a look at how we can create a reset timer procedure for our redundant code that is related to resetting the timer. We'll need to drag out a new procedure event handler from our procedures drawer. We'll also need to change the title of this procedure to reset timer. We'll go ahead and drag any of the repeating blocks of our code into that reset timer procedure event handler. Every place that these blocks of code are used we'll simply replace them with the call reset timer procedure block. Let's go ahead and take a look at how we can do this in our MIT App Inventor. Once you're in your MIT App Inventor, what we're gonna go ahead and do first is create that reset timer procedure. In order to do that, we're gonna go over to our procedure drawer and we're gonna bring in this to procedure do block. We're gonna go ahead and rename that from procedure to reset timer. Now, once you've created this procedure, we have to look at any code that is repeating or redundant that relates to resetting our time. So what we're looking for here is anywhere within this program that's going to set that global time left variable back to 30 seconds 
and then also sets the timer left label back to the time plus whatever that global time left is, which should be 30 seconds. We'll also want to go ahead and stop our clock from firing. So we'll go ahead and set that clock one timer enabled to false. Now, if we take a look in this reset timer button click, this is everything that we want to have occur when we call that procedure. So we're going to take all of those blocks and place them in the procedure. Now, if we were to go ahead and click on that reset timer button now, nothing would happen because we've removed all of the code. So we're simply going to go ahead and replace that by clicking on the procedure drawer and we're now going to call in that reset timer. So every time we call the reset timer, it's going to run whatever code that is in that reset timer procedure event handler. Now we need to go ahead and look and see if that code is repeating anywhere else within our program. If we take a closer look at our reset game button, we should also notice that we have that same procedure happening. We're going to reset that global time left to 30 seconds. We're going to change the timer left label, and we're also going to go ahead and set that clock one timer enabled to false. So instead of having those three lines of code, we're simply going to go ahead and replace those three lines of code with calling that procedure of the call reset timer. Now we've reduced the number of lines of code or repeating code within our program and replaced it with the reset timer. Now there's two other event handlers that we're going to create or two other procedures based off of redundant code. Take a second, look at your code and see if you can find any code that is repeating. Now that you've had a second to take a look at your program, hopefully you've noticed that there's a place that we can create another procedure. The redundant code that we're seeing is when we decrement the score. We can find this in the when clock one timer event handler, as well as the when skip button is being clicked. Now, as we get into activity 2.3, we are going to be creating two additional procedures, one for incrementing the score and another one to pick a new word or phrase. So for now, we're going to focus on just creating one more procedure. So we're going to go back to our procedure drawer and we're going to grab another two procedure do block. This time we're going to go ahead and call this decrement score. Once you've created your procedure, the next step is to go and take that redundant code and place it into that procedure. So let's go ahead and find that in our skip button click. We're going to remove all of that code and place it in the two decrement score. We'll go ahead and replace that within the when skip button by calling the decrement score procedure. We'll then need to go ahead and replace the remaining code in the if statement in the when clock one timer event handler. So be careful when removing your code because we do still need to keep this set clock one timer enabled to false. We're just going to go ahead and remove the setting of the variable as well as the score label text. Make sure you take that set clock one timer enabled to false and place it back within that if then statement. From there, we can go back to our procedure and call our decrement score. Now that we've created two procedures, let's go ahead and take a look at how this would run on our app companion or emulator. Once you're in your MIT app companion or tablet, it's time to go ahead and test the two procedures that we currently created. The first procedure we created was the reset timer. And your reset timer should occur in basically two different places. Anytime that we go ahead and hit the reset game button or when we click on the reset timer button. So in order to test this, we're gonna click on that start timer button and watch the time count down. If we select the reset game, our time should go back to 30 seconds. If we start the timer again, we should be able to hit that stop reset timer and we should see that that time goes back to 30 seconds as well and that the clock is disabled. For our second procedure, we created a decrement score. And this will also occur in two places, anytime the skip button is clicked or when our clock reaches zero. So let's go ahead and test the skip to next word and you'll see that our score has decremented to negative one, negative two, and so on and so forth. If we go ahead and start the timer and wait for it to reach zero, we should also see that our score will decrement.
Once you are sure both procedures are working correctly, it's time to move on to the next activity where we'll learn how to create a word phrase list. This will allow us to advance to a new word or phrase anytime the click here for word phrase button is selected.